Good morning, good people. It's Friday. We made it through lockdown for another week. Welcome to today's Facebook Live, which is Picasso. So I'm still working through my series of doing one picture with several different um, styles, genres. Um, there are various ways to talk about it. Morning, Deirdre. So I have done a bit of research online as well as in some of my books and I have um, I've printed out these paintings by Picasso and so there's a third one still underneath and I've been fiddling around to see how I can interpret this concept here's the other one using this photograph of mine and it's been quite interesting to say the least uh, to see how my my version of these pictures go so when i looked at his pictures I, I mean i know the theory behind it i've studied it but i also decided that i'm gonna just kind of um interpret it myself when i look at this picture there's a lot of repetitive shapes in the way of triangles um, and circles and these i think are intentional to help lead your eye around the picture as well as dissect the image so part of what cubism was is they were tired of drawing things in a realistic fashion in other words trying to recreate what they saw in front of them when they knew morning diner when they knew what was on the other side um, so in other words this dish that is hiding behind here um, when they did people and they were looking at a profile they knew that there was another ear and another eye on the other side of the person that they couldn't see so what they were trying to achieve was to flatten the image out and try and draw it all because they knew what was there and that's kind of how it started and it progressed over the years so I've taken a look at how Picasso did some still lives and he happens to have a it looks like a cup and a dish and a, some sort of coffee pot candlestick obviously there's a painting on the wall this is a whole room view so you have the table that has been distorted and you've got the perspective of the room in the background that's also been distorted then when I look at this one which is a close-up of a table and an arrangement of um, an orange or a lemon with a jug the jug is less distorted but it is still um so this view is from above instead of from the side where you would normally have it more as an ellipse you've got the handle drawn as a handle so there are and and he's he's put the shapes within the shapes that he is seeing in the form of the object and here he's i've no, you'll notice that whenever I've been drawing the vase or the candlestick or the dish that I've always said to you there are no points on an ellipse and here he's playing obviously this is some sort of vase that is transparent he's playing with the 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 ellipse and and really squishing it and putting the point on but here and this is a mistake that i've often seen my drawing students make they will draw the top as as an ellipse but then they draw the bottom straight and so he's playing with that whole concept the translucency of the of the vase the shadow of the vase and the table being distorted then on this one is a similar sort of thing so you have the jug which is the vase for these flowers he's outlined the shape of the flowers and sort of put the centers in this was obviously some sort of dish with lemons in I have no idea what that is <laughs> here he's even trying to kind of put the grain of the wood on on the strangely shaped uh, perspective table and so he's 
taken all the objects and he's created shapes from them. And I have decided to show you my process as to how I am going to dissect my drawing based on these images. And I've zoomed in a bit today so that you can see where I'm going. So here is my photograph that I'm working from. I'm going to sit down now. I hope my voice doesn't fade too much. Um, and what I did was I tried to take each object and break it up into shapes. And I started off with simple shapes. So the base of the vase is a circle, then I put the vase on top, and then I put in the various flowers at their angles. So that's how I got to that. Then I took the var uh, the the jug that is in the background and I kind of if you look at the jug from the top it would be like an oval shape from the spout to there. So I, I did that as an oval. Obviously I don't have these objects in front of me anymore. These were objects that belong to my sister in law. So they are back in Bedford in Cape Town. Oh, not Cape Town, outside Grahamstown. Um, same with everything else. So I had to, based on my knowledge of objects, I had to break these down into shapes. So again, nice big fat tummy for the jug, the oval for the top, the body of the jug and the handle. And for these two things, much like Picasso did here, I created these little circles and then I moved on to work on the jug together with the dish that is underneath it and sort of sketched that out. Then I started playing with the whole thing and wanted to see what would happen if I made these petals into angular shapes. And I found them quite hard and angry and uncomfortable. Um, but that was something, so for this one, I was concentrating more on the flowers, throwing in that and starting to experiment with the candlestick. Here, <clears throat> what I've done is I have started to take, and I've put it in Koki because a lot of their things you'll notice are outlines. So I wanted to see what would happen when I made my lines heavy. So I first sketched it out taking a similar course to what I had now already investigated in the previous drawings and outlined it all in Koki once I was done. I then took it a little bit further and because for this one I really didn't have much in the way of the table. I broke the table line up there and I put the other line up there. Here I decided I can see the front of the table in this photograph. So I decided to put this table in at an angle over here and have that as my start, which pushed my whole image up. And again, pretty much did a similar thing to this, but I've lost the top of my vase underneath all my flowers. And i am experimented a little bit more with my top of my, the bane of my life, Every time I've painted this picture, this piece of this flipping candlestick has given me grief. So it's still giving me grief, but now in a whole different dynamic. And then I decided, okay, dealing with this candlestick, looking at how they broke things up into shapes and forms and and so on. Where's my third picture? It's really buried. Um specifically looking at this one you can see how he was looking at all the shapes and forms and objects morning glenda so i started really looking closely at the shapes and forms that made up this candlestick so i've got if you're looking at it from the top i've got circles if you're looking at it from the side this angle here would form a triangle of course we've got this central main stick part which would be an oblong so i started sort of breaking it up into really strong shapes to see what would happen and i quite like that idea um so I carried it on 
once I'd sort of worked through that a little bit I didn't do it quite as dramatically over here and I have now this time I've also brought in a bit more table so I've got back to the table idea my base of my vase my flower shapes my jug um, I'm not so sure that this is quite working but I quite like this construction of this picture let's just move over slightly so I'm going to leave that one there then I started going really quite angular I took my jug and instead of going with the oval shape I opted to make it into a triangle and instead of keeping the curves I brought this down quite angular and so that I could see what was going on I've made my circles into strong visuals here with Koki and I've used just a normal ballpoint pen for the rest of the detailing which you can't really see um, I think on screen because you can just see my scribbles of pencil underneath so then I used a bit of carbon paper and I traced what I had done here onto this piece of paper and did the whole thing in Koki and you can see it gets really really busy and um, you kind of lose a little bit of focus whereas here you've got the circles for strong focus and although I think it's got really busy I, I'm I've ex I've kind of got as extreme as I want to go with this so I'm now having a toss-up in my head between whether I go extreme extreme or half extreme so I need you guys all seven of you who are in my stream to choose do we go with the extreme on the left or the not so extreme on the right so can you put in the chat left or right left or right which should I go with and there's a bit of a delay so I'll have to just wait for you guys to catch up with me okay there's only four of you left in the house so I will hopefully get four morning Radovan I don't know if I'm pronouncing is it Radovan 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 sorry my pronunciation of other countries language is really bad so okay Deirdre votes for left half extreme <laughs> easier to do I don't know I think the more extreme the more <laughs> okay so I've got I've got a, two rights and a left so I'm I'm looking for votes here people so which side do I go with do I go with half extreme or extreme so left is extreme half extreme mixture <laughs> that's no help at all this is this is kind of my mixture okay so we'll go with perhaps half extreme fun last chance no more comments left right i've got two rights one left so deirdre says left or perhaps a mixture Mary says right but the question is okay so half extreme is easy to see what is what this is true but at, yeah I suppose at this stage it's just line work so okay we'll go with this we will go with this right so now let's see if we can stay in picture and I need my palette out which is still dirty from yesterday so tear off palette I'll just stick it behind actually no I won't because that makes it lumpy so we'll just tear it off and pop my palette here get all of these out of the way on the floor right file 13 yes more angular and more odd is more Picasso um you've changed your mind and you want more extreme <laughs> okay 
So are we going with this one then? This is more Picasso, yes. More Picasso-esque. Fine. We're allowed to change our minds. <laughs> okay, we go with extreme. Now, what do I need? I need, as usual, my sketchy tool, which is my white paint. So I'll start every other time. I will start in the same way. And I am going to put this one. Can you see it if I put it up here? I'm just going to hide it behind there. I think you can just see that. Maybe if I pull this slightly further forward. There we go. Okay. So getting out my little brush. I'm working with my number Nort Filbert by Jackson's there in the UK. It's a soft bristle synthetic brush and I'm just using white acrylic and I am going to work. Now the other interesting thing is when I frame this so now I'm working all of these are going to go into a frame. My canvas is bigger than my frames. I'm going to lose about a centimeter on each side so I need to remember that when I am designing so that it either intentionally goes outside of my picture because here I have very carefully kept it inside my oh now you can't see the bottom of my thing I'm going to push back again um so Okay. Hi Sylvia, we've just done a bit of a vote. I had some drawings that I had done to dissect my photograph into Picasso-esque or um, yeah, um, into his style of cubism being, and we've decided to go extreme. So I'm going to start down at the bottom here with my circle remembering of course that I've got about a centimeter on each side that I'm going to lose so I want to bring bring my circle up to about here so this is the bottom of my vase and I'm not doing it as big let's see how big is a piece of paper on here Oh, I can do it as big, almost. Stay. Um, so I can kind of follow that visually. Have a nice big circle there. And then I've got this circle touching that circle. Which in the photograph, of course, it isn't. And it's a little bit smaller than my vase base, which is quite big. Make the circle bigger. Hi Julie. Hi Michael. Oh, is that Michelle? That's Michelle. Michelle. My dyslexia kicking in. Okay, so now I have got that in. I can draw my triangle in my circle over here. And then I've got so then my candlestick touches there and goes up there like so. <clears throat> and then I have another triangle at the top here, but I don't, I want my jug to be a feature. So now I'm going to put in my oval over here for this flower. And I've got this oval sitting over here for the light pink flower. 
because I need to get in. How have I landed up with not enough space? Have I moved everything up? I have. I've shifted everything up. Okay, so we'll have to come down a bit. Okay, it's all going to become a bit of a squish otherwise. Um... to see yes everything has come i've done everything higher up much higher up okay so we're gonna just start again otherwise i'm gonna completely run out of space and i have the advantage of having prepped a whole lot of these in preparation because i'm doing gray bases for all of them okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna mark Okay, I'm going to just put this in the middle because my canvas is bigger. That's what's messing with my eye and I'm trying not to run out of space. So my circle, the bottom of my circle needs to be there. Um, and then when I put it next to me over here, bottom of the circle needs to be there to there. Does that help me? okay because this is kind of the same size and then my top of my triangle is here okay that should give me a better visual base right morning nicola morning murray murray from oz we're going picasso-esque well we're trying this is my um what i've worked out from my photographs i'm working from the same photograph every day just doing a different style and hopefully that is big enough because now that circle has to go here and it has to touch there we go okay now i can put in my triangle which needs to come down a bit my supposedly equilateral triangle because it's in the middle of my circle that's the theory you know with this whole lockdown we all having to do well my kid is kind of carrying on on his own they're on easter break at the moment they're supposed to have gone back to school on monday but with um our latest update is that we are carrying on with our lockdown until um 4th of may so schools will gradually go back i understood it that they will go back from the 4th of may but um yeah we'll have to just see so this is the top of my triangle which is supposed to be the same width as that one so we should, in theory, have a triangle about so big. And then we have our circle, which is in the top of this. So I've got my circle inside, not outside, just to be, because this part of it is completely, it's contrary for the sake of being contrary. So I'm putting this view in as though I'm looking at it from the top, but then I'm also doing what the cubists did and put it in from the side. So it's just a bit of a play on that. So now I need to get my circle going. And I'm just eyeballing a circle. There we go. Then I've got to put the next one in the middle of that circle. And then I'm going to put like the side view down there and down there. Right, so now this has to get a little bigger. There we go. Now I've got that in. Now I'm going to put in, because my flowers can kind of fit in, I'm going to play with my jug, which I have now diagonalized instead of making into an oval. I've made it, because 
I didn't feel that I could have everything all round and smooth on the side and this so harsh. I needed to make something else harsh to balance these harsh lines. So this touches that and comes down like so-ish and then comes back again. So I've got this slice of cake here. It's a bit of a skinny slice of cake. Then I have a wider slice of cake going over there. And I have my circle, which is basically that part of the of the jug. So I'm breaking this down into harsher shapes. And slide behind there and behave. Um, suddenly realized because I've zoomed in today that I went off camera. And now I have, now you see I'm running out of space again. So what have I done? I've gone too big over here. Oh well, can't start again now. So I need that to come there and that to come there. And I'm going to move this circle over so that I can still have some of my bars coming in. And I'm actually going to take the swing right off. So, oh, behave. Stay there. Stay, stay, stay. Stay. He <laughs> doesn't want to stay. So, I'm going to have my swing coming off. And I've got the body of my jug coming down here. So, I need my other circle over here. And I'm going to have my curve coming back that way. Okay. Now. Now. I have got this top pink flower. Which has to pop in over here like so. And now this is the bottom of my bars and I'm going to add in the rest of my bars like so. And then I've got this big red flower that I've been working with. Perhaps I should put this on this side so you guys can see it a little bit. Um, so I've got the big red flower that has to come in and that is the biggest guy and I've got it as an oval tipping right round and doing that then I have a repeated oval which is that white flower over there and then I have this flower that has fallen down and I've got it overlapping everybody over there this one can get a bit bigger and then I've got my so this one can it overlaps so I'm going to bring it down and then I have some leaves so I've just picked out I've run out of space and remember I'm going to lose at least a centimetre off there and I'm going to lose, so I've gone a bit too far over over here um, nothing like working life for everybody so now I need to do that leaf which I have touching there and there then I have this leaf which is overlapping everything. Then I have a leaf that is falling down. Okay, so I've got three leaves. I think I've got everything in. Right. Morning, Liesel. Hi, Elise. Hello, Approver. Approver. Um, yeah, so... I've done my construction and I have messed some white paint there so I'm just going to get that off 
um, roll it all. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, so you guys can see what I'm working from, what I'm doing, and my picture. Uh, is that an easier one? Yeah, it's bigger. Sorry, I'm brushing my mouth. I'm going to put my palette down here on the side for today. Right, now, now the fun part with the colours. So I want to keep to similar colours as I've been using before. So I will be using the red. So I'm using deep red from Dollar. And I'm just using acrylic paint. And I might bring some of the pyrrol red from Golden in as well because I've been using that. And I, of course, will be using white and paint gray. Where's my paint gray? I've swapped accidentally while setting up today. I've swapped my colors on either side of me. So we've got paint gray. I need my cobalt blue. I need... Uh, where is my Prussian? I need my Prussian blue because instead of trying to put in too many patterns and things I'm going to go quite bold with um, colors so I'm going to start off with my bigger brush now and I am going to paint in the main circles as I see them so it is white as the vase is white and my strongest white is here and then it is fading out so I still want to give because they did use a little bit of shading not a lot they used colors and things as shading so I will definitely have this middle bit as white as possible and where's the rest of my vase the rest of my vase is under here so I'm gonna put that in so you can see my vase then I'm going to put in my jug and it's circle over there and I'm gonna put in my candlestick morning Karen I've never done anything as extreme as this so this is my I'm rising to the challenge set by Olga she said let's do one paint one photograph in as many different formats as possible so I've gone with the main so far I've done my two favorites which is Monet and um, Picasso so let's have this circle in white as well and let's have this circle in white although actually this would be quite a deep shadow but I'm going to start with it in white because it's much easier to go over things with a darker color than it is to go with a lighter color and all right trying not to lose that so I'm not trying not to lose my structure that I've just very carefully drawn in So I'm trying to paint in the shapes. Okay. 
Okay. No. No, no, no. Where to from here? Let's put this shape in because this part of the jug was quite white. And this part of the jug was white. <clears throat> and okay. I now have a few directions I can go in. I'm going to do, so of course, now I've thrown everything on the floor. Let's just retrieve my inspiration picture. So, looking at Picasso's pictures, he's got quite strong coloration in certain things so he still kept for example his jug in the pinks and the reds he's kept his candlestick in all yellow he's kept this vase in blue white and black his flowers are colors so i've got quite a muted color scheme going here because these three things are all the same so I need to look at this and decide, other than the flowers, which have very strong colorway, I'm going to have to decide, and I've completely left out the dish. Oh well, dish has just, dish doesn't exist in Picasso's style. I'm going to go quite blue with this, quite white with that, and hmm. We'll have to see. So let's leave that there. Pop this where I can reach it again for inspiration. I'm going to put in, so I need to make some pink. Um, grab some white out of here so I can make some pink. And so that I can block my flowers in. So this one down here, I'm going quite pale pink. And I'm going to kind of make them look Trying to make them look like stylized flowers. That one is quite red. That one is lighter pink. So I'm going with the pyrrole red in my white for that one to make it look different. And just popping that shape in there. And again, I've got the darker center as you can see in the flower over here so I'm trying to just there's a bit of shadow on that side and then this guy is white but I'm not gonna go quite so white with that one I'm going to, I'm just cleaning my brush a little bit, I don't want too much water in. I'm going to grab some white and then what I have been putting in it previously is a little bit of, and I'm looking on the wrong side because I've moved my paints. <laughs> Maybe I should switch them. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre into, into my white so that it's a bit different to, and that is, too much yellow oak. I'm having a heavy hand again. Right, it's time to add a bit more white. Right, let's go with almost like a creamy flower over here.
So I'm going with my creamy flour on this side and I'm trying to, and it has some white highlights. So we'll give it the white highlights like I have before so that you can still see that it's a, trying to be a flower. And then I'm going to put in, I haven't in this one put in this collapsed flower over here. I'm being quite selective about what I've added to this picture. And so I'm going to go with my, I'm going to start with my deep red which is underneath here. It's a more translucent red. And I'm going to come with my pyrrol red over the top. And I've got this flower as quite a big flower because it's the main feature. of this and I'm going to come back with some of the pyrrole which is quite a nice bright and I'm going to add a smidgen of <coughs> Prussian blue to just give a little bit of depth in this flower over there and so now I've got my main colors in and the background I'm going to do the background last I'm really not sure where I'm going with the background <laughs> background is the least of my worries at this stage I'm trying not to lose all my detail that I very carefully painted in just now and is now yeah, gone um, okay, let's take the excess off my brush, give it a wash, and I think I'm going to go with, so I want my vase to stand out and it needs to be bright and white, so I'm going to come back with more white over that, then I want my candlestick to go back and I want my jug to go back as well so I want my bars and my flowers to still be my central feature and I'm trying to work out this crazy idea of mine to push back so I'm I'm deciding there's quite a lot of detail on this and Picasso did put some detail into his pictures if you look at this one so I'm trying to decide how much detail I need to give my candlestick um, so let's see how blue am I going to go with my candlestick I'm going to mix some Prussian, no, some Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey is a man-made color. Um, it is a mix of Prussian blue and black, as far as my remember and uh, um, as far as I remember. And I'm gonna go. So I'm still. I know that there aren't really shadows and things in these modern art things, but I'm gonna go darker on this side. And so I'm bringing in my candlestick. Trying not to lose the shapes. And I was looking at Picasso's things. His brush strokes do show. And I'm 
because I want this all to read as one. So I've got to bring that around. But I still want to have my angles. That's gone too hectic. Bring back some white. Okay, didn't want to lose that. And then we'll bring some white up the side. And so now I'm using my mix and I'm going to go darker on this side of my circle. <clears throat> because this is my shadow side so I'm just giving it a bit more dark on that side and while I'm doing that I'm going to bring in some more dark down here Then of course I've got this triangle which I need to bring back in. But I don't want to lose my circle up here. So I'm kind of hinting at it. And then, of course, if you look at the shadow values in... So on this side, because you've got the upright, which I haven't put in yet, you've got the upright of this candlestick where the actual candle stands. Because the light is coming from this side, I've got shadow happening on that side. So I'm going to bring in a dark shadow on this side. And then I'm going to bring, uh, I'm going to leave that to dry. I'm going to bring some more of my shadow up this side while I've got it on my brush. I am completely making this up as I go along, as I'm working, because I only kind of practice that I did before going live was designing all of these um, concept drawings, prelims as they're called, um, working through the process of how I visualized my picture as a cubist style. Okay, so I am starting to quite like that. This down here is still a bit messy and still a little bit undefined. I'm quite liking how things are working at the top. So I'm going to, and all of this down here is in a lot of shadows. So I'm going to do this side again in quite a dark shadows circle. And I'm going to paint my circle as though my triangle isn't there. And I'm going to make it lighter on the other side. Make my circle bigger. Make my circle a circle. Clearly, my circle drawing capabilities today are dodgy. Swing. So this is the foot of the candlestick. And then we 
working on the same principles, I'm going to make my triangle here. Maybe I'm going to curve this triangle a little bit. Oh, I quite like that accidental brush stroke. Right, now not to mess it up. I need more shadow on this side of... But I need more shadow on my circle first, so... Trying not to mess that up. Because that's how I'm going to make this triangle stand out more, is by making this darker. And darker on this side. Okay, I'm quite liking how this is turning out. So while I've got this color on my brush, I'm going to start working in the circle up here. So now I'm working on my uh, jug and I'm going to go very dark in this circle over here. So now I'm not going to go into there because that's my handle. I'm going to go there up to my flower, around my flower and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to mix a lighter color for, this is the inside of the jug lip, of the spout. So I'm going to, no, that's too light. I still want it kind of dark in the background and work it away The joy of these Picasso-esque pictures is you can come and tidy up your edges at the end with those outlines that he used. So although I'm not, I'm trying not to mess them up. Um, right, so I have the depth, which when that's dry, I'll put another layer on. And I need the same sort of color at the base of the jug over here. And I'm going to intimate at the fact that it's a jug by giving it this curve. I'm going to use my brush strokes because he did do that every now and again. So he used his brush strokes to create a little bit of form like here on, on his dish. There's definitely some directional brush strokes happening. So I'm going to use that. Ah, tada! Gravity sucks. Stay there. Stay, stay, stay. Um, so now that I've got that in, I'm going to start working on what's on my brush. Let's see what I can work on now. I'm going to go... Let's see, my flower here is not really popping out. I know it's going to get an outline, but I think I need to either make it bigger or make this darker to push it back. But I think I'm going to also work on my jug a bit more because this is whiter. So it's not as white as my jug as my vase so i don't want it as blue as my candlestick but i don't want it as white as my vase so i'm gonna just mix a lighter blue like a dusty blue and put it in there I 
think I'm going to use the same light blue tone for the handle because I want to get that going. And now do you, I want my flowers to feel like they're in front so I need the circle that's happening here to kind of be in the flower but not too much in the flower and I'm gonna swing my brush that worked so nicely swing and I want a little bit of this blue shadowing seeing as I've got it on my brush because my colors he did go quite monochromatic in some of his pictures you know he chose purple blue and yellow as his base colors so I'm going gray red and blue and I'm going to create a little bit of I'm gonna work more with this circle because I've got the titanium white, I can come back with that on top. And then of course I've got my vase, which is underneath. So I'm going to put that back a little bit. Because that's the whole thing about these um, cubists, is they, they put in what they knew was there. So I'm bringing in the rim of the vase just a little bit so that you know that I'm hinting at it and then of course you've got the top of this vase which is underneath the flowers but I'm putting it in there okay And I'm going to bring a little bit more shadow to this side of the vase, which isn't really there. But I want it there for this picture. And I'm going to be a little bit more extreme also with my shadow on this side. because I can so I know I've got this flower coming over and I've got my vase coming over and I've got my jug coming over and I have my fly so it's 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 a whole mix of what I know is there what I know is in front what I know is behind I'm having a good old play with their concept and I've decided that this needs to be at more of an angle and a little bit darker Okay, it's a pleasure, Nikki. <laughs> I'm having as much fun as I think you guys are watching because it's a challenge to come up with something every day and I'm enjoying this challenge that Olga set me where I am doing a different style every day, well, every week. So I've, I'm splitting it. I'm doing my art on Thursdays and Fridays and I'm fine art that is like this kind of thing and I'm doing my creative crafting on Mondays and Tuesdays so now I'm going to try and come back and make this a little darker with more paint gray because this is where the depth of the vase would be nice and dark so 
I want that nice and dark. Now to balance that, because that is really dark, I'm going to go quite dark, I think, in this curve, which as I said is on the, and my brush has just got too full of paint. I'm just going to squish it all out. There we go. I have a little bit more control now. And I'm going to just bring the shadow into that side a whole lot stronger. And I've been painting for an hour. So this probably will take about another half an hour ish. Because of course I have no idea. It just takes as long as it takes. So I'm trying to bring my shadow side in here. So I'm trying to balance that. I can also balance things with the background at a later stage. Um, and I need to come back because these paints are so transparent. I can see my brush strokes through where I added a second extension here. Yeah? And I'm going to go dark in here just because it's bothering me. And I think I'm going to go a little bit darker over here. Now I've decided I'm going to go darker over here. Hi, Venu. Okay, so now let's see how that's looking. Have I got enough contrast going on in places? I think so. I picked out the top of my vase. I've got my jug. I've got my candlestick going a bit strange, but still I think it's working. What I have not done on my candlestick is to bring in this line here that I drew in which is where the candlestick is standing upright. Okay, I like that. And now, no, no, brown cow. How now, brown cow? I'm going to go back to the flowers. So I'm going to wash my brush with all this blue. Dry it. Oh! I think I need a fresh piece of roller towel. I have more paint on my roller towel than on my brush. Baby brush just fell out the water. I shouldn't leave my brushes in water anyway. Leaving your brushes in water is not good because the water seeps up into the glue area and up the handle into the wood and then that's why you get paint peeling off the handles. I learned that the other day. I think it was from Marlene who is ex-South African living in Holland. Okay, so now 
back to my flowers and I'm going to need more white for that because now I've messed in my white which you can't see because my palette is off camera I'm trying a zoomed in view today so that you have a better better view of what I'm doing because I'm working at an angle it might be a bit difficult to see okay so now now I feel like I need to work on while I've got my white and in fact I'm going to use my titanium white it's the Kryla range by De La Rani. it's the heavy body so it has huge opacity and I'm going to just use a whole lot of paint and make this really nice and white so this was the tummy of my vase and it's thick I really should have a stiff bristle brush for this so I think I'm going to grab this other filbert because it will manage the thickness of this paint I want it smooth there we go. Maybe I need to add a little smidgen of water. Yep, that'll work. Okay, so I'm wanting a circle within my circle that's happening here because this is like the highlight on the bars. And of course I have the top of my vase happening over there. I'm going to just squeeze some out onto my palette. There we go. Rather than leaving my tube open. Drop it on the oh. Let's just clean that quickly. I have got and like here they have these wonderful floor protectors for your chair so that your chair doesn't roll around and destroy your lovely wooden floor which I have here sorry I've now picked up a cat hair on my brush um, and I've actually covered my whole studio floor with them which is not difficult it only takes three of them that's how small my little studio is So I'm trying to get my circle within my circle. There we go. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to make a bit more of a highlight on this triangle over here in my in my candlestick. And maybe I'll do the same thing up here. Sorry, I can't talk and concentrate. Because this is my highlight side. So I'm going to do the same with my triangle over here because this is my jug's lip. Else does that need it? My handle is begging for something. A little bit of accidental blue going on there. very thick very very thick which is not my intention let's get some of this white that's on my brush come down
So now I'm trying to... I'm working with these circles again. Because the circles will attract your attention. So I'm trying to reinstate them. So I've got that one, that one. That one. That one's smaller than it is originally. So it's a circle within a circle, which I quite like. I've got this triangle. I've got... Hmm. That is rather dark. I'm trying to decide if I like it, but it is balanced by these pieces. And I think I need to go back to my flowers. So now... I'm going to go back and I'm going to kind of try and make what I call shabby chic roses. I want them to still look like flowers. Picasso's flowers still looked like flowers. Because these at the moment are looking a bit like, I don't know, flying saucers. One thing I haven't brought into here, which I've been using on my other pictures, is my favorite raw umber. But I've decided I don't need it in this. It could get a bit messy with too many colors. Okay, bye Liesl. Thanks for popping in. Really don't have to stay the whole time. People pop in and pop out. I'm here regardless because I need to finish my picture. Okay, so now I've got this flower which is falling down over here. And then we've got this guy, which is up here. And it's lighter on this side than it is on that side. And that's got a little bit too bumpy for my liking. Okay, I need... And my titanium white. That's working a bit better. And so I'm combining a little bit of my pyrrole red and my deep red here in this one to make this pink. Trying to make it look like a flower. This one does not want to, does not want to play ball. And I'm not sticking too much to the original picture other than I'm trying to have, there we go, that looks a bit more like a flower. And let's have a slightly darker center for this guy. Whoops! How did that happen? Overloaded my brush. Let's take that off. Clean my finger. Morning, Sue. Afternoon, actually. It is afternoon here. Completely, yeah, went with. Okay. Now I need to work on that red one a little bit more. The red one is just a bit too much like a flying saucer. And I'm going to bring a little bit of the white and whatever else is on my brush in. Because I want it to read like ovals, but at the same time I want it to read like a flower. And bring a little bit 
bit of the Prussian into the center again. Okay, so I'm trying to stick to these shapes. Now I need to put in my leaves. Because what are flowers without some leaves? And I'm going to go with yes, the same colors as before, my yellow green, because it needs something quite bright. And again, I'm going quite childlike with my shapes because um, that's what they did. They knew that the shape of the leaf was... So even if you can only see a piece of the leaf, um, cubists kind of went for what they knew was there. So I'm going to bring this over the top of my flower. And that's why I'm working with my Kryla, which is my, I call it Tipex paint. So I need to get the point of my brush in there because it will go over even the darkest of colors. And at this stage, I haven't even considered my background, but I want to see what my foreground is doing before I decide what my background needs. So I've put in this leaf and now there was a leaf here at this angle. So I'm going to put it in, um, going to put it in one here. And I think having leaves in it will also help to make it look a bit more like a vase of flowers. And I'm going to bring a leaf down onto the vase. Morning Amber, where is my friend Olga today? She is the one who set this challenge and she was dreading <laughs> the Picasso the most. She's going to have to watch the recording. I am putting these all on YouTube for those of you who are missing it and it's quite hard to find sometimes if you scroll down my Facebook feed. Um, Okay, how's that looking? I'm wondering, these are quite flat. Maybe I should have a little bit of shading in them just because I can. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt blue to this green. And I'm going to give a slight shadow. on my shadow side because I just feel that looks better okay now I've got everything in as I wanted it in now I need to assess my table area and what color it should be hmm hmm this is the only color that is sitting separate, so maybe I should have that color as my tablecloth. Just for a change of scenery. So that was yellow ochre and white. And I'm just cleaning my brush. And I think I still have some left here. Let's have a look, see. So this is what my palette is looking like at this stage of the game. So I'm just going to mix myself enough background color to be able to do the tablecloth. I 
hoop. Maybe I need to pinch. No, that's got dirty. That's my titanium. I need. So you now I have my brush in my mouth. I'm trying to talk at the same time. So now I'm just mixing enough of the same color as that one rose because otherwise it's rather isolated. You'll notice in Picasso's pictures he keeps things kind of connected not only by shape and form but also by color so I'm going to make this my tablecloth and I'm going to take that away for now and I'm going to turn that on its side uh, just going to use a little bit sorry I got some where did I have it yesterday there this is a plastic covering of some description. Okay, so now I know it, because I'm going to put a frame over it. Let's just see. And there's a piece of glass in here, so you might get a bit of reflection. So I need to see what I'm actually seeing. No, I'm not going to see any. Uh, nah, I'm not going to see any edge at all. Okay, but. For the sake of it, I'm going to have my table edge there. And I'm going to come around my shape. And I'm coming around this shape. And putting my table in. I'm going to leave my background, I think, completely grey for this one. So the base grey that I have painted everything, I'm going to leave leave it grey and you can see as soon as I put my brush down because it's a soft bristle brush it's picking up my paint again um, just trying to get a good even coat and just because Picasso never had the same edge, I'm even going to take this up slightly. And I'm going to intentionally have my table edge down here. Oops, more paint on my easel than on my <clears throat> picture. I'm just going to fill this in. I know Picasso, so I'm looking at this tablecloth. You can see he <laughs> looks like he actually messed up there and went to fix it and didn't mix the same color again. That's my own personal opinion. Um, but it could also be his attempt at a shadow. And he did put shadows and things in here. Um, and so he did use different colors. And if I look at this background over here, he used a bit of the green that he had used there to bring the shape of this jug out and then repeated it down here. So that's what I mean by this. He usually did a lot of repetition of color. But it wasn't all necessarily flat color. Well, I suppose you can choose whatever suits you because this is my interpretation of my picture in his style. So I'm picking and choosing what suits me and I'm going to just put a little bit more of the 
warmer yellow as almost like a shadow. So this is just more of the yellow ochre on my brush to create the feeling of the shadow side of the table. And I'm trying to keep it horizontal just because I want it to feel horizontal. And now that's almost dry. So until it's dry, you struggle. If you go back too quickly to acrylic paint, um, what can happen is you can land up taking off what you put on and it is a little bit irritating. Okay, my iPad is telling me I have 10% battery left because I forgot to plug it in last night. So while my paint is drying, I'm just going to quickly grab my cable and I'm going to plug my battery in. Poor starving iPad. Okay, close. And hopefully my iPad will catch up with me because now it's still doing my background. Oops. <laughs> okay, it's caught up with me. So I am now I want to come back. I just want to clean my brush, get rid of all the excess that's gone up my bristles. Then I'm gonna come back and get some more cream going which I made using my yellow ochre. I want this a whole lot more solid. I remember when my husband and I were in Paris and it was a Monday and we had gone all the way out to the Palace of Versailles. This was 20 years ago and it was closed. And that's when we discovered what closed on Monday was in French when we looked at our little tourist guide book because of course back then internet was around and I'd done a lot of my research online before I left but it wasn't like it is now with it all on our phones we didn't even have cell phones back then I used to have to use a local ticky box to be able to phone my parents with a card once a week I'd let them know where we were or we'd try and send an email if we could find a hostel because we stayed in in backpackers if we could find internet because um, we did a six week trip and um, I remember when we looked at the book we suddenly worked out okay what is open on Monday and we saw the Picasso Museum was open and it hadn't been on our schedule of things to do in Paris but off we went and I must say Picasso's rose period and his blue period where his that's right at the beginning where his work is incredibly sensitive and beautiful and he painted quite sad emotional pictures of the circus people um, and then of course he started with his cubism which was fabulous for me to see because I got to see some of those original works that caused such a uproar in society and it was really amazing having studied them and having had to draw them for exams etc to be able to see these pieces in real life was just quite amazing let's hope that this doesn't rip again oh goody and um but as we walked through the museum his work got more and more uh ridiculous is the only word i can use to describe it where at one stage, and we started walking at pace through this massive museum. It was all just his work. It was, sorry, I'm talking while I'm waiting for paint to dry. Um, he literally had a box, which was from Kellogg's Cornflakes. And, um, oh, my camera, I bumped my camera, sorry. Um, it was a box from Kellogg's Cornflakes. You could even see the Kellogg's through it. And he had painted it with what looked like children's poster paint and badly and then he had stuck a stick in it and drawn a circle on it and some cokey lines and it was in this case and it was called mandolin and then there was another 
another case where it had a stick from the garden from a tree with a couple of dots of red paint on it and an oval drawn on that side and was called flute he was having a laugh people he really was having a laugh towards the end I'm not even sure that I'm going to outline this because I kind of like where it's at at the moment. I might come back and outline it, but for now, I'm going to leave it at that. And oh, I've lost my brush under my. I'm going to leave it at that. And you will see the finished painting when I photograph it because for the moment, everything's a bit wet down here. I can't put my hand down. But that's my cubist version of my picture. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. I will see you on Monday with something crafty. Bye.